Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but the people that gave me this are obviously Steelers fans. I, I, yeah, there ain't no doubt about that, is there? I, I had somebody else before the service uh, say, you know, so, say, Pastor, you know, can you say an extra little prayer for the Steelers today? Um, you, you know, when you're a fan, I needed this during the choir song is what I needed. I could have been doing the Vestal Goodman during the choir song. Oh, yes, Lord. Um, you know, when you're a fan, there's no hiding a fan. I mean, that's just all there is to it. And my friends, if you and I are fans of Jesus, and you know that's what Christian means. Christian means you are a follower of Jesus. You are a fan of His. You're going to do whatever it takes to see Him, hear Him, go where He is, go where He wants you to go. Then that means, my friend, there's going to be evidence waving around in your life. There's going to be black and yellow towels letting everybody know that you're a Steelers fan. There's going to be loud pipes off of your motorcycle to save lives. Folks, when you and I as believers in Jesus Christ will allow the Holy Spirit to work through us, it is those works, the working out of our faith, that saves not only lives, but potentially saves souls. Because, my friends, when you and I live out the works when we wave the flag when we bear the banner of Jesus Christ in our lives people are going to see it they're going to hear it there's going to be a difference and God will use the seeds that you and I plant to bring his will to fruition if we look at see here what James says in chapter 2 verse 14 he begins and says what is it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have works can faith Save him. Uh, I, I've got a brother-in-law that has a motorcycle. And he was showing me some of the gear that he has and, and other jackets and stuff you can get. And to me, motorcycles are like golf. I'm not really interested in playing, but I really like the clothes that go with it. You know what I mean? I, I, got, I got a leather, a black leather jacket with the white racing stripes on it. And people ask me all the time, so what kind of bike do you have? I say a Schwinn. But boys, it have loud pipes. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like the look of it. You know, I've got some, some shoes that kind of look like biker shoes, you know. And, 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 and I like the gear along with it. And they've got one, they've got this one jacket that it looks just like the body armor that Batman wears in the Dark Knight. I mean, it's got like the, it's got everything except the bat emblem. I mean, it's got all the Kevlar armor plates on the outside of the jacket. And I'm like, I'd buy a motorcycle just to get that jacket. Of course, mine would have the bat emblem on the chest. And I'm just trying to find a motorcycle helmet that has the Batman ears. If I find that, I'm in. <laughs> but folks, it's not enough just to have all the gear. You know, in, in the world of, of all of these sort of things, if you've got the gear but you don't know what you're doing, you're called a poser. A poser, a P-O-S-E-R, you're a poser. That means you're just posing like you know what you're doing. You just look like you know what you're doing. But the fact of the matter is, you don't. And folks, there are a lot of people that come to church that carry the gear, they look like they're the real deal, but they're not. My friends, you can have the biggest, heaviest study Bible in the world, and it doesn't do you a lick of good if you don't know what it's all about. If you and I say we have faith, there's going to be some works around somewhere. If you're a golfer, there's going to be some evidence of golf in your life. Probably lots of it. I've got a friend of mine that has a shopping addiction and a golf addiction. Add the two of those together and you have a house full of golf clubs. And he does. I mean, this guy has more golf clubs than you can imagine. And, and, and so you spend any time around him at all, and you will know that he is a golfer. You spend any time around somebody, whatever their passion is, you spend a little time around Alan Dell today, around uh, Dave Drake today, and you will see and you will hear yellow and black. Yellow and black. Steelers, go Steelers. You spend, see, he's getting fired up. We're going to have another amen corner forming down here. Start talking about the Steelers. Look, whatever it is that you're passionate about, there's going to be evidence in your life. I, that's one of the things that they teach you in, in, when, you're, when you're doing evangelism training and you're going to people's houses and you're trying to get to know people. Uh, and and, and th they teach you, you know, when you get there, look at your surroundings. You can find out a lot about somebody before you ever walk in their house. Look in their garage. 
A person's garage will tell you worlds about the person. Won't it? I know, I've seen some of your garages. <laughs> and your garages tell me everything there is to know about you. Folks, what, what does your spiritual garage tell people? What is it telling people when they see your spiritual home? What does it tell them? What do they learn about you? You see, if you and I are genuine believers, that means there are going to be a genuine works coming out of a genuinely changed life. In verse 15, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you don't give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? If somebody comes to you and they don't have any clothes and they're hungry and you say, here, be warmed and be filled, now go along your way. But you don't give me any clothes and you don't give me any food. What have you done? Well, I've encouraged them. That's great. Encouragement doesn't keep you warm. And encouragement doesn't fill your stomach. When somebody comes to you with a need, you need to do something about that need. You need to do something to provide for them. You need to demonstrate physically what you are saying is true spiritually. You know, in, in my Sunday school class this morning, I was asking people, what are some ways that we can practically demonstrate our faith? How can we, in our, in our Monday through Saturday, I'm not talking about Sunday, because Sunday we know how we can show we're spiritual. We come to church, and we sing, and we put some money in the offering plate. We come to Sunday school. And if you're really spiritual, you go to Sunday school Sunday morning, and you come back on Sunday night. And if you're a stronghold of the faith, you also sing in the choir. <laughs> Let's talk about Monday through Saturday. What are some things you can do Monday through Saturday to demonstrate the love of Christ? Had some good responses. You see somebody struggling to get the groceries in the car or get the stuff in the car. They got a baby in one arm and a buggy in the other, and the buggy's rolling across the parking lot, and they got 500 bags of groceries and all this stuff. You know, here's a simple thing ask them, can I help you load your groceries up? Most of the time, they'll tell you no, but you've offered. Here's something else you can do when that same mom has now finally got everything loaded in their, in their car or their truck and they got a baby and the baby's screaming and spitting up all everything. They've dropped the bottle and the buggy's running across the parking lot. Here's what you can do. You say, here, let me take that buggy back up there for you. Little things. Little things. And yet you are demonstrating something that is so different than the rest of the world. When you do that, people will look at you like you've just, just grown flowers out the top of your head. And they'll be like, well, well, thank you. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to react because most of the time in the world today, people are too busy doing their other stuff. They, they won't take their own cart back up to the front. They sure don't want to offer to take somebody else's. But as believers, there ought to be those symbols, those examples in our life, little stuff. Folks, it's not the big stuff. It's the little Monday through Saturday stuff that we need to be doing that can change a life. When you see a need, you reach out, you minister to that need. You encourage where there's a need for encouragement. You love where there's a need for love. You, you, you correct where there's a need for correction. Look, nobody likes to punish their children. Nobody likes to spank their kids. But sometimes there is absolutely no option but the application of superior force to the posterior region. You know, there's just, there's just no replacement for a good little pop. That's why God gave us plenty of padding back there. Nobody's ever gone to jail because they got a spanking, but they have gone to jail because they didn't get enough. And it's never fun to have to do it, but sometimes that's just what, what is required. Folks, you and I have to do what our faith demands that we do. It's not optional. I was talking with somebody that's been involved in Southern Baptist life for years and years and years and years. But they've been a pastor and a professor and done all sorts of things. And they said one of the biggest mistakes we ever made was we made evangelism a program in the church. We made evangelism a program. We made it something that you had to come and get training to do before the church would allow you to do it. My friend, let me tell you something. I'm going to give all of you evangelism training right now that you will be equipped to go out and witness to anybody, anytime, anywhere. Here's what you do. You just show them the love of Jesus. Then you tell them Jesus died for them on the